Okay, we're going to restring an acoustic guitar today for uh, first timers who've never done this. It's pretty easy to do. Um, a couple things you're going to need. You're going to need one of these and maybe a pair of wire cutters to cut the strings. Um, when you decide what kind of strings you're going to put on the guitar, there's a lot of choices. If you look at the rack there at the music store and see light gauge, extra light gauge, medium gauge. Most guitars like this come with a light gauge set of strings. It's kind of a generic uh, feeling set. It's relatively easy to play. Mediums are kind of hard on your fingers and for beginners that's usually not a good thing. Um, this set is called medium light. Uh, the most important thing to know is what these numbers represent. And that's the gauge of each string. The little E string, the first string, is a 12,000th, and the big E string is a 54,000th. Mm -hmm. Other companies call this light, and you know whatever they choose, medium light, custom light, or anything like that. It's just bottom line is the most important thing to know is the numbers of what they are. To keep the same ga gauge of string on your guitar, the advantage is uh, the fact that when you put a heavier string on your guitar, it puts more stress on the neck and maybe on the bridge also, and it may cause your neck to bow a little bit and the strings could get higher a little harder to play. Uh, if you put too light a string on there, your neck may bow the opposite direction and start to rattle. Uh, lighter strings are easier on the fingers. Uh, you just may need to adjust the neck for accordingly for whatever set of strings you put on. Something we can do here at the music store if you need that done. Now, let's get started changing these. Uh, pretty handy little device I made out of an old piece of 4 by 4 fence post. It just gets your headstock off the table so it's easier to unwind the strings. These little pegs hold the string in. There's a couple ways to go about it. This little string wonder has a little notch that allows you to pop it underneath there and pull it up, kind of like you're using a hammer to pull a nail out. Some of these come out easier than others. You want to be careful when you're doing this. You know, you don't want to use the guitar face for a, you know, exert a whole lot of pressure on it. Obviously, it's fragile. These just, yeah, there we go. Don't chase a string peg now. And worst case scenario. The big string has a little more resistance because of the size, so it's a little harder to get out. Now, let's just start looking at these strings. When you open the pack, some companies put them in, most companies put them in six individual packages. And the numbers indicate the size of the string, and it's uh, obviously from the small to the big one right there. So, I'll start with this one. Now this little ball end here is kind of the part of the string that holds it inside the guitar. When you push that in there, you want it to go through the surface of the wood a little bit. When this peg goes in there, it just keeps that ball end from pulling back out of the hole. And it actually goes underneath and forward on resting on a piece inside the guitar called the bridge plate. Now, you just push that peg in after you've put the string in. And just pull it a little bit and it kind of catches. Now I'll typically do this where I do all of them down here first. Once you've got all the strings in down here, I'll sort of start like this, grab one. I usually start with the, you know, like these two. It's one side first, I'll do this one first, the next one's just a little, uh, habit I've gotten into seems like I don't stick my fingers as much and if you do this a few times and you stick your finger with the end of a guitar string, especially the little ones, it hurts and uh, they'll poke you pretty good so maybe you need to make sure you've had a tetanus shot before you start this process. But, uh, now I did that so quickly my, my approach to this was this, I cut it off a little bit, uh, you know about four inches past this tuning post here and I will try and align these holes where they're going this way. And I put the string in, and from the side here, I've, it looks kind of like I've made the letter S. I'm using my thumb and my first finger to gauge 
a certain amount of extra string to wrap around this post. I'll take this piece and wrap it around underneath, pull it tight, and then bend it. So when I start winding the string, it's locking the end of the string in place. And it shouldn't slip or maybe give a little better tuning stability. And just snip it off. Same thing again. When you're uh, starting to tune your guitar up, the electronic tuner is going to be a big help. Looking for the E, e note on the small string. just discovered something interesting that the tuner's calibrated way off the chart here what they call concert pitches the number 440 When you're tuning one of these up, if, if you've never done this and it's uh, new to you, knowing the names of what these notes should be, of course, is, is where you need to start with. And you've got a book or something that tells you that, or just write it down. But you can't tune the string. Uh, if you go, you know that's not right. You start tuning it upwards. And if you know the, the name of this note, it's E. And you watch your tuner. It's going through the letters of the note, C sharp, D. E flat, D, E flat, E. Now if you try to get an octave higher, which would be this note here, for another E, if you try tuning the string up that high, it would break. So if you're unsure, tune it back down where it's just, you know, this loose. And watch your tuner closely, and it's going to follow the, the numbers, of the letters of the musical alphabet. It's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. go.